while I was taking a shower, I had an idea pop in my head. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make a video on it just because to talk to people out there, to get their feedback and whatever. Now, videotaping during the daytime has advantages. I have better sunlighting because I don't have a whole bunch of expensive equipment because this is a hobby. I'm not making revenue off of it. I'm not throwing a whole bunch of our money into cameras and mics and all that stuff. But the downside is to get road noise because I have a corner lot. But at 3 o'clock in the morning when I get off work, I come in here it's really most times. It's very quiet, but I have bad lighting. So pros and cons. Anyway, what popped in my head when I was taking a shower, I said, you know what I'm going to talk about? Is a do-it-yourself investor, a money manager, to manage your own stock portfolio or your rental properties portfolio, whatever your portfolio is, to be a manager to do that. My hat's off to you for all our do-it-yourself investors out there. But being a do-it-yourself investor kind of relates to me like working on my own car or working on stuff around the house. There is times where I'll pay somebody to do something either because I just don't want to deal with it or I don't know how to deal with it or the, the amount of money that it's going to cost me to get it done is very little compared to my time that I can make it work. So I'm like, I'll just pay someone else to do it just for time reasons. And then there's other times where it's like, for convenience or to save money, I'll just do it myself. Like my oil on my truck. I've been changing oil on vehicles since I was 15 years old. But for the last couple of decades, I just pay someone else to do it because I make more money at home at work and I just pay someone else to do it. It's easier and it's quicker. And so I just pay people to do it on my truck. Now, however, my wife's alternator went out last year in the car. For convenience purposes, we went and had it tested. We, the alternator was bad. Got the new alternator. And then while she was getting ready for work in the morning, I went outside, took the old alternator off, put the new alternator on, had it ready to go, the car fired up, ready to go to work. And I took her for a test drive, and by the time she got done getting ready for work, her car was ready to go. That saved us time and money. I don't mind doing stuff like that. However, <laughs> I put a new dishwasher in several months ago in, in the house. No big deal, done many of them. Uh, I got a new faucet that's sitting in a box that I need to put on the sink. It's probably an easy job, but I hate dealing with plumbing. So that's the kind of funny things right there. There's things I know I can do, I just don't want to do. But anyway, managing your money in the market is the same way. There is kind of like three ways I look at it. There's things you're comfortable with because you've been doing it for years, you learn from the mistakes, that's the way, that's what I'm in. I've made mistakes, I've learned from my mistakes, I'm very comfortable in these things, and I do these with no hesitation, and I'll do it. And then there's things that I understand, but I don't fully understand, so I'll reach out to the financial advisor we have at Fidelity. By the way, I don't pay for the financial advising team we have. They were asked, they asked us if they could be assigned to us, and so we have a financial team assigned to us, and so when I have questions, I'll reach out to them for their advice. Usually it's on tax laws and things I've read up just to make sure I'm making the right moves, planning for 20 or 30 years down the road. And then there's the other side, which I'm not in, but they say you just don't want to mess with the money and you just haven't dealt with it for years and this is new to you, you're going into retirement, never done it before, you're like, I'll just pay somebody to do it and manage it. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's people out there that complain about paying 1%, 1.5% or this fee or that fee for an advisor. I'm not justifying what they pay, but my point is when I go get legal advice, I don't go to somebody free at work. I go pay an attorney. When I go to the doctor because I need a, you know, a surgery, I go to a surgeon and he gets paid. I don't go to a buddy or someone off the street to do it for free, and I definitely don't do it myself. And if I need a transmission worked on, I'm not going to replace my transmission or rebuild my transmission, I'm going to go to a transmission shop with certified mechanics to do that job. My point is there's nothing wrong with understanding either one, you, I don't want to deal with something or I don't know something or I feel comfortable with something. So you just kind of know where you're at, you know? It's the way I see it. This whole silliness about arguing about somebody getting paid is like, I don't work for free. I promise you, I don't work for free. If they're not paying, I'm not staying. I'm going home. So. That's just my mindset there. And learning in retirement, I understand as a transition. Like in the beginning, making money and losing money and making a whole lot of mistakes in the market is one thing. And then learning how to do it and grow a portfolio, which I've done very well over the last several years, is pretty easy. And I got a hang on that. That's easy. But the laws and some of the ways that, you know, do I need to be in a Roth? Do I need to be in a traditional? Do I need to move, shuffle this here, shuffle that there? There's a game. There's a really a, a game at play here, and I reach out for advice on that. And then, you know, the other phase is, it's three phases. Growing the money, preparing the money in the right allocations or hmm, 
house them in the right places for tax purposes later is another game. And then when we're in retirement, the withdrawal phase or living off of dividends or whatever your style is, that is another game within itself because I got to consider uh, medical costs before we're 65, medical costs when we are 65, Social Security taxes and uh, estate planning. So we do seek out for professionals, uh, attorneys. I pay attorneys to talk to about our trust. Not say I, we, we. My wife and I pay attorneys to talk to about our will and trust. I don't want to go do it, oh, I don't want to pay, it's free, and go talk to somebody else. N no. <laughs> when we're messing with big <laughs> estate planning for our kids, I'm going to pay the money to get somebody else what they're doing does it for a living. Just like managing our money in our accounts. That's, that's my point. I just was sitting there, you know, thinking. I said, uh, there's a lot of people I read, and they kind of, I'm like, whatever, each or don't do your own thing. Complain about paying for a money manager. I'm like, well, I'm in the middle. But it may be for our kids. Our kids, one of our kids may not want to manage the money, just pay some money to manage it. No problem. I won't be upset about it. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.